All right, friends, welcome back to another week of Called to Homeschool. Let's talk about love. It's not February, it's not Valentine's, but you can still talk about love always because love is amazing and it's fun. So welcome. I wonder how is your homeschool going? Uh, I know during May, a lot of moms are starting to feel a little chunky, like maybe they're not in the mood to really homeschool anymore. Friends, honor yourself. If you need to simplify and cut down your schedule, go for it. If you're like, we're still in it, this is awesome. It's just a part of the, our life and who we are, fantastic. That's what the beauty of homeschool is, is there's no right or wrong way. You do what works best for you and your family. So friends, whatever you want to create, create it. Um, I also, there's an old episode, I don't know, maybe I'll put it in the notes or something. Karen and I have done a summer school episode. Um, and I do school throughout the summer. It's pretty simple. Um, so if you want to, are curious what I do during the summer, Karen, it doesn't do as much school during the summer as I do. Um, but I, I like to just keep it going. So we keep it pretty simple and my kids just do their scriptures and read a classic book. Um, maybe some language art sometimes, but it's pretty simple and I usually do a read aloud. So just have a fun and I like it. I like to do it that way. Anyway, I want to talk about love today because who doesn't love love? I don't know. Maybe a really grumpy person doesn't love love, but most people love love. It's so fun. I have the opportunity to write a meditation for the Small Seed app. And the Small Seed app is an amazing meditation app that is all Christian based and it is super fun. And they told me I could write anything about Christ-like parenting. And I don't know about you, but I get really excited when I love something that I want to share all of it. I want to share all the things I've learned, all the years I've studied, every book that's ever really moved me or touched me. I want to share it all. So as I was writing this app, my, my meditation, I mean, as I was writing the meditation, I would just like brain dump, like here's everything you need to know about Christ-like parenting. And, and I had to keep boiling it down and simplifying it and simplifying it, which is funny because like that's my, my mantra, right? Like keep it simple, sister. But when I get really excited about a subject, I'm like, I can't simplify it. You have to know it all. So anyways, I had to continually like clean up this uh, meditation I was writing because it was just too much and too complicated. So I kept boiling it down, getting rid of all the information, excess information, and just like, what is the core of my message? And I realized that the most important thing we can do for Christ-like parenting is love. Love, right? Okay, side note. Why in the world do I talk about parenting so much on a homeschool podcast, on my, in my membership, on my website? Here's the deal. Homeschool is just one piece of the puzzle. Like your kids are always home. They are, and, and maybe they go out for co-ops or dad takes them for a little bit for, but for the majority of the time, you are with your children a lot. Uh, I don't know, like 80% of the day. Sometimes it feels like 100% of the day. Maybe sometimes it is 100% of the day. You are just with your kids day in and day out. And let me tell you something. I don't care how beautiful your curriculum is or how beautiful all the things that you have to offer. If you guys cannot get along, your homeschool will eventually fall apart and it's not going to work. So I love starting with the foundations, always with ourselves. But then that next step is with that parenting piece. Because if you and your kid cannot get along, how many times have somebody told you or you've even felt this yourself? Like, I can't homeschool this kid because we are just too much alike. We butt heads. Um, this kid will not listen to me. Whatever that story has been, if you cannot get past that, guess what? You're going to get stuck right there and it's not going to work. So I always like to bring it back down. Like, how are you doing? What's the story about yourself or the story about your kid? And then how do we create parenting so that when those things are working, guess what? You can teach anything when you are connected to, with a child. So that is why I always come back to parenting um, because I love studying and reading about all these beautiful curriculums. But let me tell you, like I, I know these this person and they, they, they want to do this amazing thing with um, parties and they want to have kids over and they want to throw these parties. And what happens is it doesn't go the way that they had hoped and it doesn't go the way they planned and they thought the kids would do something and the kids do something else. So even though they had planned this amazing party for these children, 
I'm being very ambiguous here with it and I, I'm intentionally doing that because I don't want to like gossip or whatnot. But this person with my own children and some people I know, they want to throw this really amazing party and they really do really cool things and they're very prepared and then the children do not respond and show up the way that these people were hoping they would. And then they're irritated, they're snapping at the kids, they're ornery, like they don't want to do it anymore, like I'm never throwing a party again. So if you've said those words, like I'm never homeschooling again, I can't do this anymore, I'm out, break it down and come back a few levels, right? It was never about the party, it was never about the homeschool, it's about that connection piece. And so that's why I always come back to those things. Um, so if, let me find my notes. I have, um, okay, so back to Christ-like parenting. That's where we are. <laughs> so if we go and look in the scriptures and the Savior tells us what the two of the greatest commandments are, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if we're going to parent like the Savior, then we need to love. Love is the greatest commandment, right? Um, so what is love? Love is a feeling of deep devotion, concern, and affection. But even in more simple terms, love is just a vibration in your body because all feelings are just a vibration in our body. But what's interesting when we have a quote unquote negative feeling, it's a lower vibration. So it doesn't feel very good. Love is one of the highest vibrations and that's why it feels so good. So when we are feeling love for our kids, how do we show up? I'm guessing you are patient, you are kind, you are understanding, and I love this, and you are gentle, right? I love that word gentle. So when you are feeling love, you can calmly figure out problems. Now it doesn't say when you feel love there are no problems, but when you are calm, not only like can you find a solution, but you find an awesome solution and you calmly or confidently or whatever the word is that you want, you find solutions, right? Can you think of when somebody's in, in frazzled out mode? Frazzled, is that the word? Um, it feels like it's the word. Where's Karen to like tell me if I'm saying correct words? <laughs> but like you're just feeling overwhelmed and all these things. It's like there's no solution to this problem and your brain is shut down. But when you're feeling love and a positive emotion or a higher vibration emotion, emotion, your brain opens up to see possibilities. And so like last night, my sweet baby George was just, he'd had it and he was so tired and was just screaming. And I just, he needed to go to sleep and he'd gone past that point to be able to fall asleep. And I just think with love, we figured it out. And honestly, I just put him in bed with me and I turned out the lights and just let him cuddle right up to me and he calmed right down and both of us fell asleep. And then when my husband came to bed, he moved him out. It was awesome. Um, but if you are feeling irritated and annoyed, you cannot really think of a great solution. Um, you might cause more problems, right? Because then it creates yelling or screaming or something like that. So when you are feeling love, you become an amazing problem solver. Like everything can be figured out when you are feeling love. So how do we feel this amazing love for our children and do these things? Do you remember how do we feel love? By the story we tell ourselves. Remember, our thoughts create how we feel. So if you want to feel love, you need to think thoughts that generate love. For me, I wanted to give you guys some thoughts and some ideas. Now, these are not like the only way or the only thoughts. These are just ideas or things to throw out there. Um, just maybe to get the ball rolling. And you could think about this, like about all your children or situational, like why do I love this kid? Something like that, right? But I just did like one kid, like my kid is amazing. You better believe that I feel love. So if I see my kid doing something, I'm like, wow, my kid is amazing. I feel love. Uh, I am so impressed with my kids. I am blown away by the way that my kid's mind works. If you have a kid who takes things apart or builds things or creates things um, in any certain way, like, wow, that's impressive. I love what a hard worker my kid is. And this for me is kind of a general thought, but it's one that helps me feel a lot of love. Like I love being a mom. I absolutely love being a mom. So you better believe that that for me creates a lot of love towards my children. 
So all of those thoughts create the feeling of love. And you can use some of those, right? Like even like, I love my kids. And I know you love your kids. And But I'm saying we want to take it to like your kids spill something. Your kid breaks something. Your kids made a mess. How do you feel love in those? And it's the story you're telling yourself. Like, I still love you. Like, messes can be get cleaned up. Um, I don't remember the exact words. But when my... If you guys... I've talked about my kids crashing cars. That's their favorite pastime. Um, not really, but we had... Some car crashes that, like, one day we had two cars hit. It was kind of crazy. Or maybe it was, even was three. I can't remember. Anyway, my kids have crashed a bunch of cars. And the one, my son, um, it was total accident. All of them were accidents. And my son thought he was hitting a curb and didn't realize it was a car. So he gunned it and hit it harder and did several thousands of dollars of damage to this car. And he called my husband and he was like, Dad, I, I did this. This is what I did. And I'm not going to say these words right, but it was something along the lines of people are more important than possessions. And so when you feel love for the car, then you better believe you're going to get really irritated and angry at the child. But if you're feeling that love for the child, then you are going to be able to be in a way that was patient, that was kind, that was gentle, that was understanding. It doesn't mean we are super excited about our kid crashing cars, right? But we can figure it out. Cars can get fixed. Um, you can buy a new car, but you don't buy new children. And so I love this, that with love, you get to choose how you show up. So with homeschool, right? With kid doing work or not doing work, how do I still love them? By the story I tell myself. My child is more important than math. My child is more important than five sentences. Now, I just saw somebody post this the other day, and I know she was being funny and just, but she said, my son just stormed out of the room and like broke something, crushed chips and whatnot, because I was trying to make him write five sentences. So why is it so hard to write five sentences? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is understanding. I love understanding like, why didn't you want to write five sentences? Why did you think he had to write five sentences? Like, why was there this push and this disconnect? We we're in a place of love, like, okay, what do you feel like you can do? Um, and then we can move on from there. But those amazing ideas start coming when we're feeling love, when we're feeling uh, annoyance, then we're going to just push through and we don't care what the result is if we get closer in a relationship or not, right? So when we're feeling love, we make awesome decisions and we have awesome solutions for our problems and things that pop up. Um, so when you feel love towards your kid, you are going to, the way we feel drives our actions. So if you think about this and maybe even reflect on a time that you did show up in a way you wanted to when something didn't go like you thought it would. Were you feeling love? Were you feeling understanding? Were you What were you feeling, right, that helped you to show up in that way? Now think of a time that you maybe didn't show up the way you wish you would have. What were you feeling then? And what was the story with that? Just getting curious with that. Because friends, love is always available to you. And when you are feeling love, and I'm going to say this again, you are patient. You are kind. You are understanding. You are gentle. Those are the things that you are when you feel loving. So you can still honor consequences from a place of love. It does not mean you have to let your children run wild and be wild hooligans because you want to love, just love them, right? Love has boundaries and rules, right? Like I love you, so I'm going to teach you these things so you're not running into the street and getting ran over. Um, I love you, so I don't let my 14 year old just go drive a car because he doesn't have those skills or a license or anything like that. And I can do that from a place of love. Um, you can still have rules from a place of love. Love is just an amazing feeling. So friends, why not have more of it? Can you imagine what your homeschool would look like if love was driving the show? If you are in the driver's seat and you're like, guess what I'm driving? This bus of love, my 15 passenger bus of love. Love is always available to you, friends, and I want you to have more of it. So be aware of the story you tell yourself because that will create how you feel. Friends, have an amazing day and I will talk to you next week.